When I did my shop today, I bought 19 pounds of tomatoes because they were fresh from the Okanagan and I wanted to make salsa. And that was on top of everything else. So I might have planned too much for today. Welcome to Creative Wandering, the home of videos for dailycreatives.com, where I'm trying to answer the question, how to design a lifestyle you don't need a vacation from. We covered four continents, 19 countries, and 35 cities. Now we are happy to be back home in Canada. Check out dailycreatives.com. Two times per week, I will update the blog with interesting perspectives, cooking, projects, designing a life I don't need a vacation from. I have been making salsa at home for a very long time. In fact, this book records all the different years, what the date was that I actually made it, how many tomatoes I bought, usually from Mary's Garden, and then what the specific recipe was and how many jars of salsa and sometimes tomatoes that I canned. I used to do this with my mother-in-law with her pressure canner, but in recent years, She's not really up for it, and she doesn't eat salsa anyways, so we've done it at home. While making salsa is not difficult per se, it is not a quick job. You need to get everything ready, you need to have bought all the tomatoes, you need to prepare all the work surfaces and all the equipment that you're going to need to make it, and really set aside a big chunk of time. Usually I do it over two days, which is what I did on this occasion. Prepared tomatoes means to remove the stem core, slice up X at the blossom end, put them into boiling water, and then into an ice bath to remove the skins. Then you de seed and finally chop them in the food processor. It takes me a day, so I leave them in the fridge overnight. I didn't have the full of day one to process all the tomatoes. I had already done the shopping. So on day two, it's all about chopping all the vegetables and getting everything ready to start cooking the salsa and then actually putting it into the jars and running the process of canning. out of the water one by one, ready to fill with salsa. Use the funnel, which will eliminate the salsa coming onto the edge of the jars. Then you need to measure the headspace and adjust with the spatula. Add more salsa if need be. Clean the rims of the jars with a wet cloth. Add the seals and then tighten just fingertip tight with the rims. Then put the filled jars back into the pot for processing. Each step of canning doesn't take that long in and of itself. The process of canning allows you to do multitasking in a way that in most modern settings is not that practical. But when it comes to, I suppose, the way we used to behave on the homestead, it's completely practical. Once the jars of salsa have boiled, for 20 minutes at our altitude, it's time to take them out of the hot water bath, carefully with the lifters. And then add the next set of empty jars, and if the water level doesn't cover them, 
have some boiling water on hand to make that so. If the salsa is properly processed, the little dot in the middle of the rim will point down. And then the salsa is done. My favorite thing to have all winter long is a fresh vegetable salsa with as much spice as you want. The recipe is really adaptable. Gives us 12 500 ml jars exactly. And I just love the way it looks on the counter. Thanks for watching and head over to dailycreatives.com for more inspiration. See you over there.